I'm going to be showing you how to go from this to this in under 50 minutes. That's right guys, I'm going to be showing you how you can complete the KO Perico Heist from start to finish in under 50 minutes. There are no glitches or cheats. All you need is the Kostaka, a Sparrow, some basic knowledge of the game, and you will be able to achieve this as well. And by following this method, you're going to be able to make 1.3 up to $1.8 million every 50 minutes, depending on which primary target you make. It's that simple. What's up guys, my name is Fantiga and this channel is dedicated to bringing you the best GTA Online content. Being the best money guides, tutorials and anything you might find interesting in Grand Theft Auto Online. So if you like the sound of that, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell button so you can be part of the Fantagami. Alright everybody, let's get into the KO Perico High Speed Run right now. Now when you're starting the heist, make sure that you're doing it in hard mode. To activate hard mode, you do need to complete the KO Perico heist for the first time. After that guys, Pavel will send you a text message after a certain amount of time. Letting you know that you can go back and do the KO Perico heist once again. From that text message, you have 48 minutes to go and start the heist again. Then you activate hard mode. So make sure you don't log out after you complete the heist so you can activate hard mode. Once you have activated hard mode, you can log out if you like. Now, for those of you wondering what hard mode actually does, it does two things. One, it actually gives us a 10% bonus on our primary target. So of course, we will just want 10% more money. It's just easy money. And really the only thing that hard mode actually does that disadvantages us is gives us an extra hack when we're trying to do the fingerprint scanner. So really, it's well worth it. Now obviously I started the scope out mission, I jumped straight into my sparrow and I flew over to the location. Now hopefully you get one of the locations that are closer to the city. I believe that this Ligo Zancudo one is the best spawn. Simply guys fly over in your sparrow here, blow up the car and then take out the rest of the enemies. Don't go too crazy with your missiles because you might blow up the plane which we definitely don't want to do. Now there are going to be plenty of different methods for this. I like to stay back, I like to use my marksman sniper, it takes me safe, and then move forward a little bit with one of my rifles. That's just the way I like to play, you might like to play the game a little bit differently, that's just the way I like to do it. Anyway guys, after you have cleared them out, jump into the vellum for a bit of a long drive. Unfortunately there's no way to speed this up, this is what it is, that's why you want to try and get a closer location. Now. If you do actually get a location that's far away, I'm sure you know by now, but you can actually use your Kosaka to teleport around the map. This costs $2,000, so it's a little bit of money, but it's not too bad at all, and it can get you really, really close to the location. Now, there are other methods that you can actually do where you can actually teleport to different missions and stuff inside of the game and then back out. I don't like to do this. It's a little bit risky. Sometimes you might actually be pulled into the mission and you're just messing things up for yourself. It's a little bit tricky. It's clever, it is a good idea, but I don't recommend doing that. Now I am doing this in a public lobby. What's actually interesting is you can do this in a solo session. So just go to single player and launch invite only session. Because this is a single player mission, you can do all of this stuff just by yourself. We can do it in a invite-only session, which is insane. That means you're not going to have to worry about oppressors or hydras or anything coming to blow you up. No one's going to steal your supplies. Guys, you can do it all by yourself in a nice, safe lobby. Now, if you do like the player interaction, that's fine. You can do it there. As you can see, there's people talking in the chat. You know, it can keep things interesting, but I like to just listen to the radio, sit back, relax, for the most part. And of course, pay attention while flying the Vellum. You don't want to crash it into anything here. You really don't want to redo this mission. Now, there are some glitches that you can do when you're actually close to the Keo Perico point. You can spawn a helicopter. You can spawn the uh, assistant vehicle, stuff like that. Guys, I don't like to do it. It's glitching. I do not condone glitching in this game at all whatsoever. 
Guys, people have had their accounts banned. People have had all of their money wiped. They've lost everything. They've lost millions of dollars of hard-earned work just for little glitches and stuff. Guys, it is not worth it. Don't do glitches. Do it legit. You can make so much money now with this heist. Glitching just shouldn't exist anymore. Alright guys, I'm just flying my plane for a little bit now, so just skip to about 6 minutes and 10 seconds, and we'll get back to the walkthrough. So we have successfully made it to the island, we have made it to the Keo Perico Island. Of course, you know, we don't have our weapons or anything on us, otherwise this guard will spot us. We can't do that for, you know, reasons. We, we can't have weapons for reasons, it just makes us a little bit harder. I wish we could just walk around with our silenced weapons and just take everyone out. But we can't, so we've got to do this the stealth way. Now, luckily... Rockstar has actually given us this Manchester Scout in front of us on the airport. So definitely first off, run over to that. Now a lot of people like to take this and they like to go through the little gate. Look, I think that's a little bit risky. It takes a little bit too long for me. So just follow this path. Try not to uh, get taken out by the hardest boss in this DLC on the island, which are the trees. The trees are the hardest part of this map for sure. Guys, you'll learn a route, sort of take the way I go. It doesn't really matter as long as you get across the road and down to the beach on this left side. Now, once you're here, guys, we are actually going to drive up the cliff. We're going to vault up there. And that way, we're going to avoid the gate. We're going to avoid all the guards. It's pretty simple. Now, sometimes the guard will turn around. Don't worry about that. I've found that the guards never actually spot you if they're just spinning around. So if they, like, you know turning looking one way at a tower and then they turn left the cone will go past you they've never actually spotted me when this happens so keep that in mind now guys you know you're doing well if you actually beat the car that's going along the road now i always like to stop at this little shed here as secondary targets do spawn and if cocaine is here it might be an option to come and steal it there now as you saw i only had cash so i didn't bother about taking a photo Every second counts when you're trying to do it as quick as possible. Now, secondary cash is the most profitable thing that we can get when playing solo. Now, you can get to gold. Again, you're glitching, guys. I don't recommend it. If Rockstar picks up on this, if Rockstar is just like, no, dickhead, fuck you. We don't want you getting gold and you've glitched into it. You're going to get your account wiped. Just don't do it. Just get cocaine the way they intended. Now we've got this little mini game here. Guys, I don't know the secret to this. I'm really bad at it. I just press buttons until it ends up working. So you want to try and find the target. As I said, guys, I don't really have a tip for this, unfortunately. It's a pretty hard, annoying mini game. Just cycle through all the different options. You will get there eventually, I promise. No, I was really close though. I got 107 instead of 106. This really pissed me off. But you do have plenty of time to do it. Alright guys, we finally hacked into it here. 
That took way longer than it normally does. I swear that normally takes so much quicker, but anyway, it didn't. Once we are in the security cameras, guys, you just want to skip to the right three times. So you're going to go through the panther cages, you're going to go past the car, and then you're going to get into the basement. Now, we did get tequila, which isn't the best. The order goes tequila, then the ruby necklace, then the bearer bonds, then the pink diamond, and then the sapphire panther. Now, the sapphire panther isn't always available. It is going to be a special event week, kind of like the diamonds inside of the diamond casino. So, guys, if you don't get that, don't worry about it. Now, it is very common for people to actually abort this mission, abandon the heist, and start it again. There's a few issues to this. One, you're actually spending 25 grand to start your heist again. Look, you shouldn't take too long, but you might actually miss out on your hard mode, meaning you're not getting that extra 10% bonus. And on top of that, you're just losing 10 minutes of your time, because that's how long it takes to get to this point about. Now let's take this heist for example, because I did get the tequila, and I completed it, and I got about $1.3 million in the end. Now if we divide that by 5, because it took us 50 minutes to complete the heist, and it's going to take us 10 minutes to get back to this point, we're making about $250,000 every 10 minutes. Now forget anything but the pink diamond, and possibly the sapphire panther, when it's available, I'm actually losing money. Now say I do this three times to get the pink diamond, I've then wasted $750,000 just trying to get the pink diamond. It's just a waste of time. Don't spend your time doing it. Just do the heist with whatever primary target you get. A secondary bonus to this also is you're not going to get bored of scoping out the island like three times every time you do the heist. It's just not worth it. Anyway guys, I have made my way down to the main dock. I'm sure you've seen that in the footage and I'm taking photos of all of the stuff around here. Now I do want to find cocaine lying around as it is the most valuable. It goes weed, the least valuable, then cash, then artwork, then cocaine, but of course finally we've got gold, but we can't get that solo unless we glitch. But we're not glitching. We're not doing glitches. We're not glitching. Now hopefully you can find two lots of cocaine, because then your bags will be full. Now unfortunately I couldn't find two things of cocaine, so I went back to the cameras to see if I could get artwork inside of the building where I can steal it. This is where you do the fingerprint scanner, you can actually steal the artwork there solo. Now guys, after I have finished scoping out all of the locations around the main dock, and the primary target, I want to have myself caught by guard so I can teleport quickly back to the airfield so I can jump in the plane and go back to the island and start the prep missions. Now once we have landed in Los Santos, we want to go straight to the interactive menu, go to the Costaca and call our Sparrow. That way we can fly really, really quickly back to the Costaca. Now it might not be spawned. If it's not spawned, go back into your action menu and call the Costaca to your point. Now as you can see here, it was a little bit far away. So I went into services, Costaca, I returned the Kasaka to storage, and then I called it back so it can be teleported closer to my location. Now when you do call it, we'll always put it at the closest spawn point available, so that's really, really handy. It's a good little tip. Now I am a doofus and <laughs> I drove straight past it so I had to go back down and drive around losing a little bit of time but hey it's things you learn. Now to save a lot of time here you don't actually have to stop 
on top of the submarine. Unfortunately, Pavel called me when I was trying to enter the Kostaka quickly, but if you just fly basically on top of the Kostaka and spam right on the D-pad or whatever button you use, it'll pull you in because the Sparrow does be stored in the Kostaka. That's a really quick method. You don't have to slow down or anything. You just zoom right past it at as fast as you like, and it will pull you in if you press the button at the right time. Now we are going back to the prep board to start our prep missions. And we're going to start with the approach vehicles and I like to use the submarine Kostaka. Now this is a very hard mission I will say, but once we start it guys, Jump over to the controls of Tsukaka, and we want to fast travel to the closest point. As you can see, it does tell you where the mission objective is. So we're going to go over to North Chumash. We have this little cutscene of the Kostaka moving. Look, this does get old after a while. I wish this wasn't a thing. It's cool the first time, but you do get really bored of it. It does take quite a while. And then the submarine makes noises. It goes like, Bee, wee, bee, wee, wee, wee. Something like that anyway. Anyway, <laughs> once you have uh, finished the teleporting sequence, guys, we want to run back to the Sparrow and we want to go over to the objective. We want to go to the Merryweather test site. Now with your Sparrow guys, just take out all the vehicles in the area. There is a buzzard that spawns and there is going to be three uh, dingings in the water. Now unfortunately I didn't get the buzzard from my first rocket, but that's alright, I got it eventually. Now guys, after that, just jump out of the, the, the Sparrow, swan dive straight into the water. Don't worry, you're not going to die and swim down into the submarine. Now we did destroy our Kostaka because we can actually request a dinghy from the interaction menu with the Kostaka. So that's gonna really help us getting back to the Kostaka. Now guys, once you are in here, this is when the mission gets really hard. There is a bunch of Merryweather dudes with shotguns that shoot you the second you walk around the corner. So guys, I do highly recommend putting on some body armor, having full health, and equipping yourself with the assault shotgun. Now, every time you go around a corner, just shoot. Just just shoot the walls, shoot anything. It doesn't really matter as long as they aren't shooting you. Like, as you see there, I just went down the stairs and I got shot. I got obliterated. It wasn't very fair, but it is the way of this mission. Now, there are crates that do actually contain health packs, body armor, some ammo. It is pretty helpful they do keep you alive now as you can see guys i am just shooting basically the whole submarine up i don't care i don't want to die and and trust me you can die pretty easily now in this area there is a chef with a knife so make sure to take him out make sure he doesn't come around and surprise attack you and somehow i didn't die there the guy did me lee there's the chef that guy didn't shoot at me either. I was very lucky I should have died there. Anyway, guys, there is the Sonar Jammer. Now, it does spawn in three different locations around the submarine. Just run around the submarine. You will find it eventually. Now, guys, once you have picked up the Signal Jammer, just go back the way that you came. Otherwise, if see, if I went to the top level now, there would be a bunch of guys that I didn't kill that I now have to kill. So if I just stay on the lower level, go back the way I came, the submarine is going to be clear. There's going to be no extra guys that I have to kill. So I'm not going to die. I'm not going to drop the signal scanner. It's just much easier to go back the way you came. Now guys, once you get to the top, exit the submarine. If you haven't yet, call the dinghy, swim up to the dinghy, and it's time to go back to the Kostaka. Now the one thing about this is buzzards can and will actually spawn. There's going to be two of them. Now, thankfully, look, they have actually pretty crappy aim, so don't even worry about them. 
I like to shoot them. It, look, it gives me something to do. It's target practice. I consider it target practice. You know, guys, you should always shoot things that you can shoot. Improve your aim in GTA. Now we have come back to the uh, Kostaka here. Man, I hate saying that word. The, the submarine, it, it's a terrible name. I really struggle with it, but we have got the Sonar Jammer. Now some people might actually like to do the mission for the long fin. If you are going to do that mission, make sure to call the Phantom Wedge. But when you're doing it, make sure you're actually out of your helicopter, otherwise it won't work. So guys, that makes that mission really easy. You just get the Phantom Wedge, you go pick up the trailer, it makes losing the cops really quickly, but always drive down to the docks when you're losing the cops, down the south side of the map, because uh, that is where the point will be where you have to take it. Now we are getting the plasma cutter, and we are taking the submarine back to the city. Now you can actually get into the submarine and drive it closer if you like. I don't know, I don't really like to drive the submarine, so I just go straight into the sparrow, make things more fun for me anyway. Now this mission can actually change, it's either going to be the plasma cutter or it is going to be the fingerprint scanner. Now four, five out of, four out of five times it's going to be the plasma cutter because only the bearer bonds are kept in the safe, which is pretty interesting. I find that quite weird that most of the things are actually in the glass safe. Regardless, guys, if you do get that one, you do have to go to the Diamond Casino and Resort. You do have to find the uh, special VIP guy. You do have to kill him. You then take the code. You just jump back in your sparrow when you're all done and fly back to the Kostaka. But now we are stealing the Plasma Cutter. So we have to fly over to the safe house. Now the safe house can change, it doesn't really matter. Once we're there guys, all we have to do is take a photo of the billboard, but Pavel doesn't shut the hell up. He just keeps talking, so you can't progress in the mission that you might, you know, at the speed that you might like. But just listen to him, listen to him talk. Find the uh, photo board that you need to take a photo of, and eventually you'll be able to take it. Send it to Pavel, and then he'll send you over to another location to go and get the plasma cutter from a bunch of thugs that are stealing stuff themselves. Now finally, Pavel has shut up. I can take the photo. Now once he is talking at this point here, don't wait for him to finish talking. Just walk outside of the door. You're going to be fine. Then it's going to take you to another part on the map. It's either going to take you to the Rockford Hills or it's going to take you sort of to the Del Piro area. This one is taking me over to Del Piro. Now this one is actually harder of the spawns for the Plasma Carter, I believe. The other ones are sort of down an alley, so you can actually sort of just blow everything up in the alley. And then the cars that come don't really mess around with you too much because they struggle to get into the alley. This way is sort of on a main road, so there is a little bit of havoc associated with this mission. Now, I did actually do a major mess up here. I flew straight into um, a palm tree, and that dealt a lot of damage to my sparrow. That was not good at all. You know, guys, once you are here, just, just start firing rockets, take out all of the bad guys. Now, as you can see, the rockets aren't really getting into there, and these cars spawned right on top of me. It's not good. It's not really the... 
It, it is quite a challenging mission, I will say, if you're not if if you're not expecting what's going to happen. And anyway, guys, as we can see, there is the plasma cutter. My health is very low. I probably should have put on some body armor or something else on at this point. But this way, there is only one entrance. There is only one exit. So it does make this actually really, really tough to do. As you can see, I am nearly dying. Thankfully, these NPCs don't have really uh, strong weapons. Otherwise, I would definitely be dead there. Like if they were using an SMG or so instead or something like that. But I did quickly throw on some body armor. Uh, to protect me from these oncoming cars. My sparrow, look, it's starting to die, but I know that I can make it back to the Kostaka, so that is what I do. Now, I was telling you a little bit earlier about just plummeting straight into the Kostaka, not worrying about slowing down. This is like a perfect time to actually show this off. My helicopter is dying. I need to get there really, really quickly. We don't want it to die, so as you can see, I'm just flying past the little uh, interaction menu pops up to go inside of the Kuskaska. That's what I do. You don't have to slow down as long as you fly really quickly above uh, the right area there. It's just right after the, the tower, I suppose, of the submarine. And it'll pull you in. And that prep is complete. We're back to the equipment and we're going to do the fingerprint cleaner. So we've got to go over to the warehouse. Now again, this mission does sort of change uh, where the mission actually is, but it's only like two or three different locations. It's always pretty easy. Now, of course, we always want to jump into the Sparrow and we want to head straight over to the yellow marker. There's really not much to it. It's pretty simple. Now, when we are here, there's two ways we can actually do this. We can either just run straight into the building and start blowing each other up or shooting at the enemies. Or you can actually go in, you can turn the power off so the security cameras don't notice you. Now, I don't find this very useful at all because the second you go in there and you shoot one of the guards, they all start shooting at you anyway. So it is just a little bit of time wasted. But if you do this quick enough, you're going to have Pevel still talking to you after you've eliminated all the guards. So it's a bit of a waste of time anyway. Now on this one, I did decide to shut off the power to show you guys exactly what happens. This one is pretty close to the entrance, so it's not too much of a detour at all. Actually, it's basically right next to the door. Uh, other warehouses that you go to, they are going to be in different locations, but this is the box here. You just go over to it, you just turn it off. It's really quick, it's really simple. It doesn't take long as long as GTA, you know, recognizes that you're there. Anyway, the power has been cut, so these security cameras are not going to see us. As you can see on the minimap, they have deactivated. Now, once you're in here, the guards are not going to notice you are there until you start shooting at them. Previously, I've always liked to use a sticky bomb, but as you see here, the vehicles next to me actually blew up, killed me, and I lost, you know, 10 seconds of time. It's not huge. I did lose $500 for dying as well. But also, if you don't die, using explosive actually puts fire all over the ground. Now, I do like this. I do like when they die and the NPCs get uh, stuck on the wall. But from now on, I'm just going to uh, make sure I just shoot the, the, the NPCs. Uh, that way I don't die and lose the valuable seconds, I suppose. So once you've done that easy little minigame, it is always the same minigame there where you just have to... Uh, press enter on the, the green numbers. Now, if you do fail it, you do have to restart. And you can actually move uh, left and right. So you don't have to do them in the order. But I just like to do them in the order anyway, because it's not too hard. Now, you do have to go over to the archive, which is the next step. It's always pretty close. And then we do actually have to find this little uh, antenna card thing. It is pretty easy to do. It's not too hard at all. But once you get to the archive, guys, there are two security cameras which we do need to deactivate them. Uh, to do this, we just shoot them this time. We do not need to turn off the power or anything. It's interesting that you can't just do this for the other ones as well. If you actually shoot the other ones, it does alert the guards. So it is a bit weird. Anyway, put a few bullets into the security cameras. You'll see that they'll break. You'll see that they'll uh, shoot electricity everywhere. And then just run into the compound. Now, the antenna is actually pretty easy to find. You'll see that all the computers... They each have a keyboard and a mouse next to them. 
just look for the one that actually has an extra thing on the bench. It will move between the benches here, but if it has a keyboard, a mouse, and some other little flat looking card, that is the one you need to pick up. Plus, when you get close to it, it does pop up on the minimap, so it is pretty easy. From there, guys, we just have to fly back to the Kosaka. Now, if you don't shoot out the security cameras, if you just run in there and you set off the alarms, there's still no guards actually inside of the archive, so it doesn't do much there. All that happens is when you come out of the archive, there are a few helicopters that spawn to try and shoot you down, but look, as long as you've got the Sparrow, you're going to get away anyway. It's up to you which way you want to do it. I, don't, I can't be bothered dealing with the NPC shooting at me, so I take out the security cameras. It only takes like an extra second. That's the way I like to do it. Alright, so we are entering back at the Kosaka. We're doing that method that I taught you before. And as you can see, this time I actually messed it up. I, I was too high. I went at a wrong angle. I didn't complete it properly. And there you go. That's what happens if you don't complete it correctly. It just takes a little bit of extra time. But it's nothing to really worry about. You just have to fly back. You know, you might want to slow down. I don't know. The seconds I save, I think it is much more valuable. Alright, so I've done the fingerprint clan, and now it's time to collect the last equipment. Now, there are actually two missions left. We've actually got Demolition Charges and the Cutting Torch. Now, if you do Demolition Charges, the Cutting Torch becomes optional. And if we do the Cutting Torch, the Demolition Charges becomes optional. Now, I didn't know this at the start when I first started doing this heist. I think a lot of people actually still do both. Now, we actually want to go to the construction site. We want to get the Cutting Torch because we want to be entering through the submarine, going through the compound via the sewer tunnel. That, to me, is by far the best entrance in the game because all we have to do is the mission to get the Cutting Torch. We don't actually have to find anything else. We don't need to find, you know, any intel. We don't need to find any bolt cutters, any grappling hooks, any of that, saving a lot of time because we don't actually know where they spawn 100%. They do move all over the map, so every time you actually do it, if you're trying to find them, it just takes up a lot of extra time. I, instead, just like to do the cutting torch. That way, we can actually get through the sewers. That way, we can actually continue on and go through and cut down all the chains and stuff required for us to get into secondary targets. Now, for this one here, this is one of the construction sites, one of the many... But what's really good about the Sparrow here is you can just fly all the way up to the top and you're at the top of the building. Now if you don't actually have the Sparrow, you do actually have to go into the lifts, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool feature in the game, but look, it does take a little bit of extra time. Now I like to do this mission in stealth and how we do it in stealth is you're going to see that there are actually a bunch of hard hats that spawn. Well, I think there's one per every construction site that I've found. The game says, you know, put on the construction site to blend in. So you put on the little animation, you put on your hard hat, looking gangster, looking sick, looking slick, my friends. Now, once we're doing this, guys, we've got to just find the toolboxes. They are highlighted with a little green arrow, but make sure that we don't actually stand near the guards too much because it will alert them. So we can run past them, but you don't want to run into them. You don't want to run, like, on them. You don't want to stand in front of them. But as you can see here, I found the cutting torch here. You're just looking for a little blue uh, item, whatever. There it is. That's the one we got. You collected the cutting torch. Now it's time to run back to the Sparrow and fly back to the Kostaka. Now, as I was saying, I like to do the cutting torches instead of the demolition charges because I like to go through the sewer. The demolition charges allow you to actually blow up the front gate. But then for that, guys, you do have to try and find guard clothing so you don't get detected or you have to fly in a different way. I believe going in via the long fin or the submarine just saves so much more time worrying about all those other secondary intels. So guys, fly back to the Kostaka and we'll talk about the next mission.
this point we have collected the uh, all the equipment that we need to complete. We have completed the vehicle and now we're going to do the mission for the weapons. Now the, the top three weapons I like to use. How, however, sometimes when using the sniper rifle, I find that it alerts guards that you actually haven't shot at. You, I find like if you shoot one guard and then there's other guards behind them, the guards behind them think they've been shot at and they dodge and then they set off the alarm. It's really weird. It's a really stupid glitch. Um, so I don't like to use the sniper rifle. That leaves us with the aggressor or the conspirator. So we can either get the uh, assault shotgun or we can get the new assault rifle added into the game of the at Perico Husk. And of course we want to put silencers on both of these. You just spend $5,000 and you've got the silencers. These are... It's the best $5,000 you can spend in this game, to be honest. This would be a nightmare without it. Um, anyway, guys, when you start this mission, you've either got two possible missions. You're either going to fly over to an office building where you take out a bunch of dudes, hack the laptop, uh, that's this one here, or you get one where you have to escort a Meriwether helicopter. If you get that one, guys, just fly over to the helicopter, blow it up, go back to your Kukaska and start another mission. Now, this is worth it because... Following that Valkyrie, like seriously, it takes 15 minutes. It is absolutely retarded. I think the game thinks that you are uh, in a car or something. So look, you know, it's hard to follow the helicopter. But when you're in the Sparrow, it is just aggravating. Guys, don't do that mission. Blow up the vehicle, blow up the Valkyrie, go back to your Kostaka, start the mission again, and hopefully you'll get one where you have to come to the office. Now... This is really fun here. I like to run into the office and use the stone hatchet. That's because after you kill the first guard, you get this little invincibility thing going on. As you can see, I am getting absolutely plugged by all these dudes. Uh, but because I'm in basically invincible, it's kind of like Trevor's ability in single player. I am just mowing through all of them. Now, every time you do kill one, uh, as you can see, the bar does regenerate. So you can run through here, have a little bit of fun and just slaughter all of them. Now guys, as you can see, these guys are just using like pistols and stuff. They don't have any serious weapons, like an assault rifle where they can just completely mow you down. So if you want, just go in with a assault shotgun or a uh, assault rifle of your own, and you will be able to kill these guys out pretty easily. Now one thing to notice when actually using the stone hatchet is when you're in the enraged mode, you can't progress further in the mission. So that can slow you down quite a bit. Anyway, you go to the gun locker, you find that it's locked, then you have to hack the laptop. And I absolutely hate this mission, this little mini game here. You have to try and find the numbers. I suck at it. I never do well at it. <sighs> There's no real advice that I can give to you here, guys. You're either going to find the thing or you're not. I like to, like, cycle through the targets, as you can see here. And I went straight past it. I'm going through it again. It is at the top right now. Um, yeah, I went straight past it. I actually hate this meaning game. It's just, it just does something to your eyes. You just can't find it. But you will get there eventually, guys. Just do your best. And eventually I found it. There we go. Now, once you've done this, this annoys me. You have to then go open the gun locker. Then once you've opened the gun locker, you then have to take the weapons. Like, seriously, why can't I just open the gun locker and take the weapons all at the same time? I don't really understand why what's going on there but anyway guys we've collected the weapons we've got to exit the office now i do recommend actually going back to the top so you can get to your sparrow so you can jump in the sparrow and fly away very quickly away from the oncoming helicopters now i do actually nearly die here it was a little bit scary i probably should have put some body armor on or something as the helicopters came they did start shooting me i did nearly die it's not great Anyway guys, fly back to the Kostaska quickly, and it is time to actually launch the heist.
All right, we have done all the prep missions and it is time to start the heist. So it is on hard mode, guys. We're going to do it solo. I recommend purchasing super heavy armor just in case something goes wrong. But I'm going to show you how to do this in stealth. You might already know how to do it. But, you know, this is the way I like to do it. Anyway, guys, pray to vehicle Koska. Infiltration point, the drainage tunnel. Uh, compound entrance, the drainage tunnel. I like to leave by the main dock. It is the closest exit to the compound. Plus, you can actually steal cocaine and that sort of thing. Now, some people actually like to not steal all the secondary targets. I don't... If you're doing it really, really quickly, fine. I don't think it's worth it. First off, you don't get, you know, about the $400,000 from the primary targets. On top of that, you don't get the extra $100,000 for filling your bags and completing the Elite Challenge. So there's two reasons why you should actually go ahead and fill up your secondary bags. You do get a heap of extra money if you fill it with cocaine or artwork. And it doesn't take that much longer. And you get... $100,000 for completing the Elite Challenge. So, to me, it's a win-win. Yeah, we're doing it a speed run, but also we want to make as much money as possible while actually doing these. Right, so we did spawn in the Kaskaska, and we do have to take the long swim over to the uh, drainage tunnel. Now, I'm not sure if this is faster or if it's faster going in the long fin. The long fin does drive insanely quickly. So, keep that in mind, guys. These are probably about the same time so don't worry about that too much. Anyway, guys, once we are at the drainage tunnel, we're going to pull out the cutting torch. Now, if you noticed, it was actually blue when I took it from the construction site. And now it's red. I, <laughs> I don't know how that works. I mean, that is a bit of a meme. But anyway, guys, cut through these. Now, once you actually get to the ones on the corner, it's pretty tricky to do. But if you can actually put it right in the middle, it cuts both at the same time as you saw there, so if you put it right in the middle, it cuts both at the same time. So, it's only seconds it saves you, but hey, I guess every second counts. Anyway guys, you push the grate through, and then you can start swimming through all the particles of poo, because it is the sewer, so you swim past all the poo particles, get into here, and then you enter the compound. So you watch this little mini cutscene. Blah, 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 you're opening it, blah, 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 it takes time, blah, blah, blah. Alright, up we go. Now, once we're up, guys, we want to pull out our weapon, whatever weapon we have picked. Make sure it's got the silencer on it. And what I like to do playing on computer is I like to aim, pull out the weapon, aim, and then press control. So that way, you can actually do a sort of, as you can see, a quick run, but you're still in stealth mode. So that is a little hack for you there. Now, take out that first guard, come over here, take out the second guard, and this guy has dropped a key card for us, so that is great if we were with two people. For us, it is actually useless. Now, we're going to beat the juggernaut, we're going to come up here, and we're going to take out the security camera without the guard noticing. Then we're going to take out the guard, just like that. Now, you don't need to reload all the time, it is just habit, so you don't run out of ammo. But yeah, anyway, run past here, be careful with the guard on the left, he can come. And take him out before he notices you. You can do that all pretty quickly. Now we're taking out this guard here. He has actually dropped the keys. Meaning we can actually go down the bottom. And that way we only have to do two hacks instead of four hacks. That is a quick little tip there. However, I am going up the top. Because for two reasons. One, there is this secret safe here. It's hidden into the wall, and you can get anywhere between, I think it's 53 all the way up to 93 grand here. So I got 53, as you can see here. It's not the best, and then we're going to steal the artwork here. Because I think I only got one cocaine and one artwork. Artwork fills up your bag 50%, cocaine fills up your bag 50%. So it works really well. Anyway, we're stealing that, guys. We've got 53 grand, and as you can see, we're now up to 240 grand. So that gave us about... 240 grand like why would you not do that that took five seconds and it was so easy now right here I actually jumped off sort of suicided a bit I wouldn't recommend that for two reasons one you might get seen like I don't know why I did that I, I think I just thought it would be quicker I, I guess it is quicker but it is just so dangerous it just like it's just not worth your run anyway the, the juggernaut could see you or the guy patrolling down there could see you or you could just die if you, like, hit your head or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, guys, we're, we're moving on to the fingerprint scanner. That first one there is really easy. You only have to move the first two. 
And then we're moving on to the second one here. Now, look, these are pretty easy once you know what you're doing. I like to start from the top, and then the second one I count down to. Third one I count down three. It does take a little bit to get used to, and you don't always get it perfect every single time, but eventually you'll figure out what you're doing, and you'll be able to get there in absolutely no time at all. Oh, so there you go, guys. I only had to hack through two instead of four. I think it's worth it. You might just want to stay in the uh, in the room up the top there and hack to come down the elevator. It is up to you. Now here is, it's going to change, but because we have the cutting torch, we can break straight through the chains here, which is good getting the cutting torch instead of going for the demolition charges, of course. And then we're going to cut through the tequila. So we'll pull out the plasma cutter. And if you do this right, guys... Watch the heat level here. It goes all the way up to the top. Then you want to let go and don't let it overheat. And go all the way down to the bottom. Now if you do this correctly, if you let it go all the way down to the bottom and basically all the way up to the top, you should be able to do this in three turns. Just like that. So that is the quickest way to do it, guys. You can get it done in three turns and it takes no time at all. Now it's actually time to get out of the compound. So I'm going to try and go the way that I came. We're going to go back up the stairs. The Juggernaut is not coming, so that is good. Of course, we're going to go back into our stealth mode. Now, there's actually no more guards that we actually have to kill. We're going to run up through here. Be careful not to get seen by the guard on the left. And there's a guard that's standing right next to the buggy, but he's not actually seen in our cone of vision, so that's good. Run up to the door, press E. You get this little cutscene, and you are safe from the guards from now. Now, from here... There are a few guards that we are going to kill outside, but it's been pretty cruisy from here on going out. Now, we've gone through the door. We've watched that stupid little cutscene that we've seen so many times. We've got $1.1 million. It's not bad. So we're going to take out this guard here. Now, this is a problem where the uh, sniper rifle comes in. If you use the sniper rifle and you take that guard out, the two guards standing behind it will actually get alerted because the bullet sort of flies past them. Anyway, if you're quick here, you can actually take both these guards out with headshots, uh, with just one bullet, take out that security camera, and off we go uh, to the main dock. Now, you can actually throw an explosive at those two and blow them up. It won't set off the alarm, just so you know. Now, be careful here, guys, with the helicopter that uh, El Rubico is going to chase you in. Now, he does go off in three different directions that I have found. Um... You're sort of racing against the clock if he does come your way. This is the route that I like to take. There are a few hard trees, but generally the uh, NPCs all spawn in the same place. And once you're actually in this building and the helicopter flies over you, you're not going to be seen. So guys, slowly sneak around here. Take out the guard here. Take out the security camera. Now, if you take out too many security cameras... Uh, an alarm does go off, but as you can see, the helicopter is approaching us now, but because we are actually hiding inside of this building, he is not going to see us when he passes over. So he does pass, basically, director of us. We would have been seen if we were anywhere else, but we are safe, so he didn't actually take us out. Now, guys, our bag is full. We have $1.36 million. Not bad as a take at all. But we're going to run over here. We're going to take out this guy standing alone by himself there. He is gone. And I'm also going to take out this guy by the crane here. Now, you can save time. You don't have to take this guy out right now. Uh, but I find it a little bit of a pain. Uh, if, you, if, if you're using the boat and then you take him out, um, he can actually see you sometimes. Now, it says to actually take that boat you know, that little boat there. You don't actually have to take that boat, and I'm going to take this one here. This means I don't actually have to take those two guards out on the left. So if you're lucky and this boat does spawn, just come through here, do a little handbrake turn. As you can see, I was out of their radar. Now we've just got to be careful that there's no patrol boat that is coming. There wasn't. I just made it through. And guys, that is how you do the heist. So there's a lot of information I know. Guys, we've just completed this heist in under 50 minutes. So as you can see, guys, with the tequila, we've taken $1.36 million. So this is one of the lowest takes that you can get. Hopefully you get something that's not the tequila, so you can take more. With the pink diamond and two things of cocaine, you can take upwards of $1.8 million in just 50 minutes. Like, do you guys know how insane that is? That is stupid money. Before that, like... 
the best business that you could do was like $500,000 an hour. So we have made it to the end of the heist. If you get the tequila, I do think it's worth just completing the heist. Otherwise, you are wasting those valuable 10 minutes actually, you know, going and doing the scoping out again. If you don't do that, guys, like, if you think about it this way, every five times that you actually re-scope out that mission to get the pink diamond, you could have done another heist. I think that is the better way of making money. It's up to you guys. That is what I recommend doing. Now, of course, the actual take wasn't $1.3 million. Because Pavel takes some money, all of that. He completed the heist in 8 minutes and 35 seconds. We have 15 minutes to complete it. So you can see that you can do it blazingly fast. Now, in order to complete the Elite Challenge, you don't actually have to do it in stealth. But if you do get shot, you do lose your money. So then your loot bags aren't going to be full. So you're not going to earn the Elite Challenge. Now, I know this has been a really long video, but I hope this has helped you out. I hope now you feel confident speed running the KO Preco heist, doing it as quick as possible, making as much money as possible in GTA Online, because this is by far the best way to make money. Solo and for multiple players, if you all just do the prep missions, then join together, finish the heist all together, guys, you're going to be making tons of money. Alright everybody, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and share so you can get out to as many people as possible. Of course, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell button so you can join the Fantag Army and be notified when I upload brand new videos like this one to GTA Online. Alright gamers, I'll see you online.